It's the next day of the week, and it's the best day of the week, Friday. It's Friday, November 10th. I'm Coy Wyatt. This is CNN 10. And before we have some fun, we start today with our ongoing coverage of the conflict between Israel and Hamas. We're giving you not one, but two quick one-minute reports that dive into different aspects of this story. First up, Hamas tunnels. Israel defense forces are continuing their bombardment and invasion of Gaza, saying one of their intentions is to destroy the infrastructure that allows Hamas, the militant fundamentalist Islamic organization, to launch its attacks. That infrastructure is largely made up of what Israel says are hundreds of kilometers of tunnels that Hamas has spent years building underneath the city streets in Gaza. Israel calls it the Gaza Metro. In 2018, CNN got a rare glimpse inside these tunnels in the footage you're seeing now. For more on this vast underground network, we turn to our Oren Lieberman. The Israeli military controls the air and says they've encircled Gaza City on the ground. But underneath the surface, Hamas still has the advantage. Israel is going after Hamas's underground infrastructure. This soldier shows an electrical system, he says, is used to circulate air underground. The IDF says it has destroyed 130 tunnel shafts since the start of the war. That's just a small fraction of what's known as Gaza's metro. Israel says there are hundreds of kilometers of tunnels below Gaza. In 2018, CNN was given an exclusive look at a Palestinian Islamic Jihad tunnel inside Gaza. Its concrete walls creating a durable underground maze that favors the defender. Tunnels can pose problems for even advanced militaries. But Israel faces an even greater challenge. Hamas is believed to be holding many of the approximately 240 hostages underground, possibly in different groups. Now for our next quick minute. As Israel moves further into Gaza, residents are fleeing south. As they walk, they wave white flags, a symbol that for centuries signals that the flag bearer is not fighting. The Hamas-controlled health ministry said this week that more than 10,000 people have been killed in Gaza, with that number largely made up of vulnerable populations, including more than 4,000 children, 2,600 women, and 600 elderly. These numbers cannot be independently verified, though, by CNN. With more on the residents of Gaza, we turn now to our Salma Abdelaziz. Taking only what they can carry, families are fleeing Gaza City. They wave white flags made of anything they can find. And as the sounds of war echo around them, they signal yet again that they are innocents. The Israeli military has been calling for weeks on all those living in the northern part of the Strip to move southwards, most recently opening what it called safe corridors for limited windows of time, pushing thousands here to Salah Din Street, where evacuees describe a harrowing journey. The only way to reach the route is by foot or by cart for those who can find room. There was heavy shelling on our neighborhood and we were forced to flee. We have to use these donkey carts because there's no fuel, he says. They cut everything off to force us out of our homes. The UN calls this exodus forcible displacement and accuses Israel of the collective punishment of some two million people. Let's turn now to space, where Japanese scientists are thinking about our rising space waste problem. Researchers at Kyoto University in Japan are building wooden satellites hoping to soon send them into space. Why wood? Not the usual metal. Well, when satellites are no longer in use, they come back into Earth's atmosphere where they break up into metallic particles. That litters the layer of the Earth we call the stratosphere. That's the second atmospheric layer of Earth that rises anywhere from 6 to 12 miles above the Earth's surface, depending on where you are on the equator. And we're getting a lot of space debris. In 2021, we sent up nearly 1,400 satellites into space, with scientists worried that this future satellite trash, if you will, could damage the ozone. The Kyoto University researchers say wooden satellites can hold up to metal ones because there's no oxygen in space that can break down the wood. But when the satellite has run its course and it starts rapidly descending back towards Earth, poof, they just turn into gas. They've tested three types of wood so far with the Japanese big leaf magnolia coming up as the winner so far. If all goes well, we might just see a prototype in space next year. 
10 second trivia. Which basketball star holds the all time three point contest record for points scored in a single round? Steph Curry, Sabrina Ionescu, Diana Taurasi, or Larry Bird? Caco! In July of this year, WNBA star Sabrina Ionescu broke Steph Curry's record by hitting 25 of 27 three pointers. For today's story, getting a 10 out of 10, we're getting secrets of success from one of the hardest working, most focused people you could ever meet. WNBA superstar Sabrina Ionescu plays for the New York Liberty, and she's set to represent Team USA at the Olympics in 259 days. I caught up with her at practice this week to ask some questions just for you. What's up, lovely people? I'm here at practice for Team USA with Team USA and WNBA superstar Sabrina Ionescu, and we are gonna learn some tips and tools for success from the GOAT. All right, here we go. What type of challenges did you face growing up, and how did those adversities shape you into the person you are today? There's just so many, but you know, I would say one is, is not listening to people telling you what you should and shouldn't be. Um, from a young age, especially being a girl in sports, everyone didn't think I belonged and didn't think that I should be playing, but um, I really didn't listen to the outside noise of what people thought, and I really just believed in the dreams that I had and worked really hard at getting to where I'm at today, and I'm really thankful for that. What would you say is the secret to success? Just being the best version of yourself, um, committing you know, yourself to working really hard and not letting um, you know, the outside noise creep in and comparing yourself to other people, but just running your own race. You're a superstar athlete, but in school, how important was education and focusing on studying hard and getting good grades? It was everything. Um, being educated is, is a big part of your role as um, a professional athlete, being able to talk and, and have the knowledge of understanding what's going on in the world and how you can make it a better place. And so um, school has always been super important to me. I was able to get a master's in college and graduate with that. And so that was always at the forefront of what I wanted to accomplish. I love that. All right, we're going to have a little bit of fun now. Okay. Do you have any hidden talent? Like I can say the alphabet backwards really fast. Z-Y-X-W-T-S-R-Q-P-O-N-M-L-K-J-I-H-D-D-C-D-A. I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, but oh, that's like, not what? as cool as that. <laughs> <laughs> so you get like, do you trade off? Like, do you eat food sometimes yes. with your left and right? Yes, Everything. both. Yeah. Just natural gift, or did you work on that? Um, I think naturally, but I've, wor I've also worked on it. Love it. Yes. All right, you heard it here. Keep shining, everyone. Remember, stay humble, stay hungry. I'm Koi Wire. I'm Sabrina Inescu. And we are CNN Ten. My goodness, from Japan to China, India, Egypt, the Middle East to the moon and infinity and beyond, we've been everywhere this week. We've learned a lot, laughed a little, and we showed a whole lot of love. Shout out to the Cougars of Sutton Middle School in Atlanta, Georgia. It was so awesome visiting your school this week and meeting some of you rise up. We are also showing love today to the Bulldogs a Bullet School in Potomac, Maryland from me and my team. Keep shining, superstar. Remember, you are more powerful than you know. I'm Koi Wire. This is CNN 10. It's been a blessing to spend this week with you.